is supposed to be me. So I may have to play multiple roles. I've been looking for Wood, who is supposed to help me out. He's the one who roped me into this, which is a blessing, right? I get a chance to be blessed with this, which all of you can too. And, and we're supposed to be, uh, again, getting ready for Vacation uh, Bible School, which starts, if you look in your bulletin, on Sunday, July 23rd through Friday, July 28th. The Bible school is going to be on putting on the armor of right, God. Right. So Angel Sharon said we had to armor up, so I'm armored up, all ready to go. Where's your armor? Did you get the memo? It's going to be spiritual armor. Well, yeah, but it's from also Ephesians. It says, it says yeah. armor up. Friday night will be our family night where we encourage all the workers to attend. Oh, all right. So I'll see you all at BBS and have a great rest of the Lord's Day. And hey, maybe you can get a picture in the army. Yeah, maybe. maybe. We are so looking forward to um, VBS coming up at the end of the month, and um, these decorations are only the start, even though these are pretty cool decorations. We're going to be seeing some more, and I think they're going to be continuing to set them up, and Jeremy has taken the lead for that, but there's been others on the team who've helped out as well. I just want to thank all, all of those who are helping out. Um, what, a, what a great, this looks awesome. Um, Man, even under the crosses and everything, look at that. That must have taken some time and thought and effort. So let's, let's make sure to thank everybody who helped out there. And because there's going to be more setups, will there be any other need for anyone else to help out later? Or are we Okay, so if you're interested in helping out any more, setting up for VBS, talk to Jeremy Ripple. And uh, we look forward to, to that. Be in prayer for our time with, with the students as we share biblical truths with them. And um, by way of announcement, um, just want to follow up from our really kind of table talk that we did with Sam Parkinson's a couple weeks ago, a little less than two weeks ago, or um, on, on that Monday. We had mentioned before, I think Wood and announcements, um, I think last week, mentioned potentially that this is available online to listen to. Um, if you weren't there, if you were there, you know how encouraging and wonderful it was. If you weren't there and you wanted to listen to this, Q&A with Sam. I do have it recorded, um, but after further review, um, we decided, and he decided that we wanted to not keep, make that public, but I have a link to be able to share on our, on our Facebook, or on our YouTube page to be able to listen to that, so if you'd be interested in learning more from Sam's update here from Abu Dhabi that he, he was here at our church, I could send that to you, so just let me know if you're interested in that. I'll get your email, and I'll, I'll send that your way. So let me or Pastor Wood know, and we look forward to sharing that with you because it was very, very encouraging. Uh, and and just, just to make mention of the last two weeks, being able to catch up after being gone with my family for vacation, 
It was just so encouraging to hear and to see um, the way that the, the Lord just blessed the body through, through song and prayer and preaching with, with Pastor Wood and then Micah. Um, it's such a blessing to have a, a plurality of men, gifted men, to be able to preach the word. And so make sure if you didn't, let those brothers know how edifying those sermons were because I know they were edifying because I watched them in services. Uh, uh, encourage them with the way that you were encouraged in the word because it really was an encouragement. And speaking of the word, we have a series on spiritual warfare and the Christian's armor coming up. Um, I'm going to be going through Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 um, starting next week and um, to coincide with this, this uh, VBS theme. My shirt, it's VBS 610 on the back of my shirt. Perfect timing this year with VBS to coincide with a series on the armor of God. So make sure just to be here and ready uh, to be able to engage with God's word. It's going to be a real blessing. And in a moment here in the call to worship, I'm going to read the passage for us to start so that we could, we could um, be reminded of these truths as we begin our service. But I just want to let everybody know uh, a little bit about what we have in store for our service today. Uh, we're in for a treat. Um, Eric Corwin is going to be sharing um, during the, the message time today, sermon time today, um, the work of God and testimony of the things that God has been doing in his life. And when I went on the um, men's retreat with him a few months ago, I think some of you remember when, when we went together, um, it was just so evident that God is doing a great work and has been doing a great work in his life. And has been very eager. I've been very eager uh, to have him share with the, with the body, and this is the morning that it's going to happen. So that's coming up soon, so be ready for that, as well as a blessing to be able to hear from the Hybrid Five. Again, those of us, remember at the, at the um, picnic, church picnic last year at Lake Viking, you were able to be blessed by their gift, their family's gift, as they uh, led uh, music during our church picnic. Uh, today, we're going to be able to hear from them during our worship service, and so we are in for a treat. We're so really excited to have you all. Thank you all for being here, and um, I just want to transition us now to our call to worship and the reading of the Word of God in Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 20. This will really where, where we will be for the next month in terms of preaching and in terms of our VBS theme. So let's take these things to heart. Let's stand for the reading of the Word. And um, we're going we're gonna to see God's word, and then we're going to sing truths about God's word right after this. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and of shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the sword of God, word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert in all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this church, this gathering, this day. We just pray, Lord, that you would as we know you will, lead and guide every aspect of our service, that you would use those of, of, of us who are part of leading the service to, to be able to say things and do things and sing things and pray things that are glorifying to you. And that you would be with all of us who are here worshiping you, 
that we might participate in this service and song and, and paying attention to your word and paying attention to the words of the songs, that you would use it to build up and to develop and to encourage and strengthen and grow all the saints that are here today. We do not take for granted this opportunity, Lord, to be able to gather and worship. As we know, there are many brothers and sisters throughout the world who do not have the same privilege as us because of persecution. Lord, would you strengthen our dear brothers and sisters who are persecuted, and would you help all of us here to, to pay attention and be attentive and to care and to realize how weighty and special and wonderful it is to worship you. Would you move our hearts? Would you do a work that only you can do so that we might be changed leaving this service? By your grace, for your glory, we do all this for your glory. And we say this in Jesus' name, amen. Sing along with us as we sing this morning. we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. This is the time that we take up our offering and bring needs to the congregation that, that we might have in our life that we need God's help with. And at this time, is there anyone that has a need this morning that they'd like to have us pray for? Yes. Yep. We want to remember Shelly. She's lost Sims. She's lost her mom this week, and uh, that uh, you need special special touch from God to get through those things. So, other needs? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all your many, many blessings, Lord, of life. And thank you for your hand of mercy that reaches down and touches and comforts us, Lord, in time of loss of loved ones. Thank you, Lord, that you uh, are in control, that you look and, and take care of all of us, Lord, in many different ways. We do ask that you bless in the service this morning, bless the special music as it comes forth and, and the testimonies, Lord, as they 
are shared today. We also ask that you bless in, in the giving this morning as we take this offering. May you uh, receive it, Lord. May it go to further your kingdom. May we be led in our giving to you. We ask this in thy name. Stand with us as we sing this next song while they're taking the offering. God is so morning. For those that you don't know me, my name's Eric Corwin. God called me to come preach a little bit today. As of 6 o'clock this morning, I didn't know what I was going to say, and I still don't. But I'm going to be, I'm going to preach from my heart. This is what he laid on my heart this morning. I went to men's encounter 11 months ago. It's made a big change in my life. I've struggled a time or two since then, but to get back on track, you have to turn everything over to the Lord. I got five topics that kind of touched me the last 11 months. I'm going to just read through some of them. The first one that really spoke to me is on repentance. Repentance is more than just being sorry for what you have done. True repentance will cause a 180 degree turn away from sin, not just to escape the consequences, but to receive the benefits. Jesus did not come to make bad men and women good. Jesus came to make dead men and women live. When I come to the altar last August, I thought I left everything at the altar, but I didn't, and that's what I struggle with. I try to take care of things my way, and I have to turn everything over to the Lord. The second thing that spoke to me, do you think God, if you don't think God can use you, I got some examples from the Bible. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. God used all these, guys, these people. 
Jacob was alive. Lazarus was dead. Then just a whole long list here in this book that tells you different people that God used, just normal people just like us. God can use you in any way. It may be teaching kids. I'm going to use Al. We used him last month as a bus mechanic and a bus driver. God used him. Anything you can do to please the Lord. The next one I'm going to speak on is your identity. No, no, I'm taking that back. Take that back. This this statement here was spoke at the conference on true love. Trusting someone should not break your heart, but if they do, you love them anyway. I mean, people you love, it breaks your heart, but you still love them. That spoke to me a lot, because a lot of times I kind of use that as again. Sometimes my bride, my wife, Lana, she'll she'll say something or do something or don't do what I want, and I get irritated, and I have to say I'm sorry. The next big one is what I've seen happen in our church since Brother Daniel went to Men's Encounter. It's prayer. I've seen a lot more praying going on in this family, this church family, than I have seen in a long time. There's four key parts to prayer, to a powerful prayer. First, first part is beginning with thanksgiving. Be thankful for what he's already done. Be thankful for what he's going to do, whether we, it's our way or his way. And, this, and the, the, uh, mess, the uh, Bible verse for that is Psalms 104. Enter the gate with thanksgiving and his court and with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Pray and declare God's word is the number two. You need to put God's word into it. That way it's directly to him. That way he's listened to us. He already knows what you need and what you're going through, but he wants you to be aware of what's going on. He wants you to know where you're hurting, what you desire and want. Believe you will receive. It may not be exactly the way you want it, but you will receive a blessing and an answer through God. And that's in Isaiah 55:11. So is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose in which I sent it. Last last key part, close in Jesus' name. You need to close your prayer in Jesus' name. That is, and that's in Philippians 2.10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the and under earth. Let me read that again. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That's Philippians two ten. Last one I have to talk about. I wasn't prepared. I got the wrong page down. Good. Our identity. Your identity is what you are. I can't remember how you say it, babe. Our identity. Our. Say that. Things that happen are part of our story, not our identity. I wish I could find that verse. 
we've been through a lot as far as my family. And I come here with the love of this church. Now you can turn to anybody in this church and tell them what you need and how you hurt. This body here is part of my family. Benjamin County is another family I go to monthly in the Ashes and Beauty. It's all the men that serve keep, keep me focused on what I need to work on. My weakness, I encourage everybody, every one of you brothers and sisters to go to Men's Encounter or Ashes to Beauty. It's a once in a lifetime. Everybody deserves to go. It changed me. I still have a lot of things I need to work on. I don't like to read, and I need to study the Word every day. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm asking God to help me. There's a lot of weakness I have. I ask God to help me and guide through it. God is an awesome God. And like Mike says, we serve a mighty God. He can help us through anything. Just got to turn it over to Him. And that's the hardest part for me, to turn everything. I like to fix everything myself. I like to do everything my way, fix it my way. But I more that I get go to men's encounter, I find that I can turn things over, no matter what it is, no how big, no how little, I turn it over to him. The next men's encounter is August 18th through the 20th. That's a bad weekend because that's for the weekend we have our church picnic. The deadline is July 25th to sign up if you would like to go. The next Ashes to Beauty is September 15th through the 17th. Now, if you are interested in going and would like to go with your spouse, there's a conference in November 3rd and 4th called I Still Do. It's a Friday night and all day Saturday. It's a great deal to go as a couple. If you haven't been to either one of them, Ashes and Beauty or Men's Encounter, this would be an excellent deal for you to go together and see what it's like. The best part, I think, of the, this encounter ministry is two things. Praying. Out of 1,000 people that are there, there's 300 of them are servers. I guarantee, I guarantee there's somebody in them 300 servers have been in your shoes or going through what you're going through. And God will work it out. You need prayer. Somebody walk up to you you don't even know and say, I'm going to pray for you. And somehow, I know how, God, God puts it on the heart to pray. Your leg's hurting. They come up and say, I'm going to pray over your body. I know you're aching. They, God works them in a serious way down there. And he can do it here. If you need prayer, don't hesitate to call on me. I'll come and pray over you. Right now, home, on the phone, I'll come over to your house. Prayer is the most important tool that we got. And it don't cost nothing. I think we've said enough. I want to listen to some music. I love you all. I like a, I like a closing prayer. Is that all right, you, Daniel? Okay. Okay. I want to share just a little bit more. All right. Last time I went to Men's and well, Ashes and Beauty, I took a sister, took my bride and a sister and her husband. Her husband was just going to float around, down around Logan's house and all that, but he got drafted like Brother Daniel did. He got drafted in to be a bus driver and a mechanic. So he got to see the other side of the conference as men gathered and prayed while the women were having their conference. He's seen the love that we have in each other. He's seen the caring of everybody. There's no bickering, no belly aching. It's all sharing and love. And I, when Daniel went down, we seen a lot of prayer. We seen a lot of prayer. And I think that's the best tool that we got. And it don't cost nothing. You can do it anywhere. I'm going to pray now. Father God, 
I thank you for getting me through this word. I pray that I touch somebody's heart. Lord, there's, Father God, there's families that are going through a lot of trials right now in this congregation, this family of love here that I have, this family I can call my family. Now, the Baptist Church, it's my family, Lord. Father God, I ask you to lift every one of these families up to help them through these trials. I pray that they will ask, reach out to you and ask for your help, your guidance, your comfort. Lord, I pray if somebody in this church don't have this, the light of Jesus in their life, I pray that they will open their eyes and accept you. I pray that they will see the light in somebody in this congregation or somebody in this family is going to sing. See the light of Jesus in them, Lord. I pray that they can have the joy. Because we know the evil spirit, all he wants you to do is kill and destroy our life. He wants us to be unhappy. He wants us to take the joy out of our life. Lord, pray that you would take each and every one of us in this family. Let them see the light. I pray for this hybrid five that are coming to sing, Lord. I praise you for the ability to perform, to sing, to glorify you, Lord. I pray that you calm the nerve and let them have fun up here, Lord. Let them have fun and enjoy to uh, share what they have to share. Lord, we thank you for the safe travel so far. and Be with them as they leave today and go wherever they got to go, Lord. Just give them safe travel. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, what you've already done in my life and each and every one of them in this congregation. Father God, forgive us that we fail you, Lord. Father God, we love you. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. We are a musical group south of Kansas City, near Harrisonville, and we want to continue to be encouragers of those who are in the faith. And uh, like Eric said, we can use anyone, he can use no more people to accomplish his will, and we want the Lord to be glorified this morning. So please join us if you know these songs. Psalms 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for
saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Just grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already Word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yea, when good flesh and heart thou fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall. 
You get the glory from it in my weakness, in my brokenness, in the crushing. You get the glory from this on the mountain top, in the valley low. You are in control. You get the glory from this on my good days. On my bad days, I will still say, hey, you get the glory from this. You get the glory from this. Please get the glory from this. And no matter what I have to go through in this world, as long as you get the glory from it. Oh! <laughs> 
I'll tell love, the same girl. I'll tell love, this paper. I'll tell it wherever I go. I count every blessing. I go.
the storms rage all around. I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. Giver of this life in me. You're what I'm living for For all my deepest gratitude You love me even more So as I walk through valleys Listening for the Master's call I'll trust in you Shepherd of my heart
Sweet expression 
sees, you cannot receive until you know him in his fullness and believe. Looking forward to um, continued good work um, in your life and the lives of others. Uh, thank you for sharing, brother, in that way. And also to be able to have uh, the Cockman family here again. We had a, a, it's, we're becoming like a little bit of a, you know, I know you live too far away to be, to, to be members here at this church and you're a member somewhere else, but having you uh, at our picnic last summer and then here this year, it's just a sweet thing. And we're looking forward to continuing to have good relationship with you and your family and um, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I was encouraged in gospel realities just through the whole service today. And man, did I love that song. You get the glory in this. I mean, no matter what I have going on and what's going on in this world, you get the glory from this. Tribulation, persecution. We've been seeing that in the Matthew series. You get the glory from this. Weakness, brokenness, crushing. He gets the glory in all of these things, whether we're high, whether we're low. He gets the glory. What a great song and, and message. Thank you guys for just a real thoughtful um, uh, series of songs. And we're going to be praying for your family and being thankful for, for your family in these things. But as we just respond to what we heard today from the message and from song and from prayer, every aspect of it, um, we want to we wanna respond as we normally do just in song here. And we want to have another opportunity while we do uh, during our response time. Um, Eric and I will be up front for prayer. We'd love to pray, like Eric said, 
We're ready to pray anytime, whether it's here after service or any other day of the week. But today, we're going to be here to pray for you if you'd like to come forward for prayer. Or if you're more comfortable with us coming to you, just raise your hand. We could come back to you and pray with you for whatever's going on in your life. We're going to do that now. And we're also going to be taking up a special love offering for the Cockman family, um, and giving their time and talents and gifts to us uh, this morning. And so while we're singing in this response song, um, we'll be, be passing out opportunity for, for us to be able to give uh, generously to them and uh, to, to bless them as they've so uh, blessed us. Um, so let's, let's respond to the word. Let's respond to gospel truths together. And let's also, um, if you feel so led, um, give, give generously to, to the family here uh, to be able to bless them as well. So would you all just stand with me um, during this time of response? Again, uh, to not go it alone, to seek the Lord, to seek to give him glory even in hard things. But that doesn't mean that we just have to be stoic and alone and keep it to ourselves. We could actually seek prayer and love and care from one another. And so I just want to remind us all on that again. I just thought that that was a really good message in that song. And I want to remind us from scripture here um, in closing in our benediction together. 2 Corinthians 4. 16 says, so we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but to the things that are unseen are eternal. Let's look to God and his glory, no matter what season we're in. Let's be there for each other, to love one another, share gospel hope and reminders to one another, and let's have a great rest of the Lord's day, to God's glory and for our good. Have a great rest of your Lord's Day, church. Mm -hmm.